Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for an informative and exciting Scenic Group USA webinar. My name is Justin Whitmer, and I'm the Professional Development Specialist here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. This webinar will run for about 40 to 45 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, CLIA Global. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Andres Andy Fuentes, to discover more about Scenic Group USA. Andy developed his passion for traveling while serving the United States Marine Corps for eight years. In the cruise industry, Andy has worked for Carnival and Disney before moving into business development at Celebrity, Royal Caribbean, Oceana, and Crystal Cruises. While at Oceana, Andy was named BDM of the Year for two years in a row. Andy joined Scenic Group USA as Regional Sales Director at the beginning of 20, 2022, covering the Florida Territory. He brings to today's presentation 16 years of experience in the cruise industry, focused on luxury brands. Travel is part of how he spends his leisure time as well, as he, is, he and his wife and son explore the world together. He also enjoys staying home with a barbecue, a glass of wine, while taking his taking in his Miami Dolphins and Florida State Seminoles. But take it away, Andy. Justin, thank you very much for the great introduction. And good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending where you are in the world. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in this fantastic webinar on Scenic and Emerald Cruises. Uh, today, we're going to cover uh, all four experiences. As you see, see, as you see here, you have the two uh, river cruises, uh, the river cruise of Scenic and Emerald, and then we're also going to talk a lot about the Scenic Eclipse, which is on the bottom left, and of course the Emerald Super Yacht, which is on your bottom right. Uh, so without further ado, uh, again, my name is Andy Fuentes. I am the Regional Sales Director in Florida for both Scenic and Emerald Cruises. So you're probably tuning into this webinar and you gotta think to yourself, you know, I probably have heard a little bit about Scenic. I don't know too much, uh, especially if you're in the US market uh, and Canada, you're like, okay, what's, you know, can you give me just a little bit of what they're all about? Who are they? Are you part of a big cruise line? Basically, Andy, just give me the whole skinny on who are they? Well, we are actually a privately owned company. Uh, we are based in Australia and Zook in Switzerland, and we are a global company who came uh, to the U.S. about 10 years ago. And what you see on the screen, first off, is our owners, Glenn and Karen Maroney. Uh, again, this is a family-owned business. We do not have another cruise line looking over us or investor group, nothing like that. It's just them two. So we have vertical implementation, which means that from the point that the ships are being built in our own uh, shipyards to the, when the ship hits the water and its crew member, they all work for this beautiful ownership, Glenn and Karen Maroney. And part of our brands are what you see on the screen. You have the Scenic Eclipse, which is our ocean vessel, uh, the Scenic Luxury Cruises and Tours, which is our land and river component, then you have Emerald Cruises, Evergreen, which is a land-based company in Australia, and Mayflower, which is a land-based company in the US. That's our companies that make up the Scenic Group. But today, we're going to talk more about Scenic and Emerald. So let's dive right in. So if you look at Scenic Luxury Cruises and Doors, the first thing you I would definitely recommend you to think of is the creme de la creme luxury, ultra luxury as it gets. You have the spaceships, which is the river cruise component, and, and I'll explain how, why they're called the spaceships. And also you have the scenic eclipse. The scenic eclipse is the James Bond of the ocean. And you see the helicopter there, that's because we have two helicopters on this cruise along with the submersible, the submarine, that I will show you what she looks like in a minute. As advisors, as you look in this brand, you know, you kind of think of who should I honestly um, start talking about CNAC? You know, who should I present this to? I'll be very honest with you. Uh, the age group on board is the baby boomers, 57 to 75. 
you know, they are the biggest consumers of traditional media. However, because of the pandemic, things are changing, or they are, I would say things have changed. And this is not business as usual. This is not business as we did in 2019. I like to say this is business as unusual. This is the new way folks do business in 2022 and moving on to 2023 and then in the future. You know, due to the pandemic, a lot of these folks have built social media and they made social media as part of their research, part of how they get ideas. So 90% of these folks ha are have Facebook. So if you're not into social media, if you're kind of on the fence, or you have a social media and you haven't used it in a very long time, I would definitely recommend for you to dust up that social media, um, try to get educate yourself in social media because a lot of these folks, the baby boomers, have Facebook and they do a lot of research on Facebook. And Facebook, honestly, it's the major one. You have obviously you have the others like Instagram, YouTube, et cetera. But honestly, Facebook is how they honestly start to research and start to research you. Once they talk to you, definitely they would like to see what you're all about, see what your content's all about. So again, if you have Facebook, if you have social media, put a lot of content in there and a lot of various content, whether it be um, a luxury cruise line like Scenic, or a luxury hotel, Orlando, Orlando uh, tours, or whatever the case is, definitely just put a medley of content. That way you look credible to these folks. Um, and again, a lot of folks that go on scenic, they like to uh, visit the arts, the culture, be immersed. They love active and wellness. Again, these are honestly the demographic you should aim for, but don't place this in a box. Definitely because of the because we're out of the pandemic and folks have pent up desire. You definitely want to, you know, listen to them, ask questions. And if you honestly think that scenic might be a great um, vacation for them, I would say introduce it. You know, give them a brochure. We do have um, printed brochures. You know, give them a brochure. Send them with a note saying, "Hey, thought about this during our conversation." And then again, during this webinar, I will kind of will, will take you in what are those things that you should definitely look for when talking, having a conversation with your clients. And to give you a map of what honestly, what folks on Scenic belong to, we have associations like yacht clubs, over 55 country clubs, universities, people that like to come on Scenic, they're celebrating milestones, so forth and so on. So if you just kind of if you are dipping your toe in the luxury market right now, maybe you just want like a map, kind of a GPS where to find new business. This is honestly something you should take a picture. Um, you should you know screenshot it because honestly, these are where the money is. Follow the money. This is honestly where you might get the luxury business. And again, these are just the folks that like to go on scenic that belong to these type of associations. So now that I kind of give you what our clientele is, where they come from, you know, where they hang out, let me show you the scenic eclipse. And there she is right there. Now, a lot of our, our marketing uh, pictures, they come from Antarctica. So don't be surprised that you, during this presentation, you see a lot of Antarctica. Now, we just do not go to Antarctica. We go honestly to all seven continents. Uh, but a lot of folks like the scenic eclipse for Antarctica because it's glamping. It's a luxury expedition, but she is luxury and the yacht um, combined together. This particular vessel has 232 passengers. That's the most that it has. Now in the Arctic and the Antarctic, it only carries 200 max because you probably are aware that in Antarctica, you can only have 100 people max uh, out and about seeing the beautiful landscapes and the beautiful animals that Antarctica has to offer. The scenic eclipse is known for uh, various things, but the two helicopters that she has, and also the mostly two beautiful submersible, the submarine. She carries around six passengers, uh, the scenic eclipse two, which will launch in a couple of weeks, 
she will carry eight passengers on the submersible plus the driver and it's more stadium seating. So you have a lot of great scenery once you come down. So what's included and what can they find on Scenic? Now, Scenic is again, an ultra luxury uh, cruise line. So you're definitely going to find that everything is included from A to Z. When you come on board, all you have to do is give your passports, your health questionnaire, which comes to this news that uh, we no longer uh, require any vaccination. It is recommended, but it's not required, nor PCR testing or mask wearing. Uh, that is completely optional. When you're on board, again, and your health questionnaire and your passport, we will escort you to your room, and that's where you meet your butler. Every single stateroom, whether you're in the yacht or the river, and it doesn't matter what category you're in, you will always have butler service in your stateroom. All the dining venues are also included. In this particular vessel, we have nine dining venues. Your 10th, they say up to 10, your 10th dining venue is your stateroom because we have the 24-hour room service and it is complimentary. All your beverages are also included, whether it be non-alcoholic, whether it be mixed drinks, cosmopolitans, whiskey, you name it, there, it is included. There's no up to price, there's no limit, Again, if you see it, it's on our menu, it, you could definitely order it. There's only like less than 1% that's not included, and that's like the Louis 16 cognac and um, those high-end drinks. Those obviously are not, and it's a case-by-case, case, but again, 99% of the alcohol beverages are included. You do have the spa on board. We have a, uh, a full spa as well as boutique stores, and we the Biggest thing about our cruises is all shore excursions are included. Uh, and we have a large menu variety of excursions. Uh, some ports of call, actually, if not all, have up to five shore excursions that you can pick from. Now you can't do all five, but again, it's just variety as some folks, maybe one day would like to take a hike, another day they would like to go on a culinary tour, another day like to do wine tasting, a lot of them can take it slow and go uh, probably to a city tour. Again, there's just a large variety of excursions that you can pick from, and they're all included. And that is the scenic free choice. So all in all, on the scenic eclipse, you wherever you are in the world, you can go by air with the helicopters, on the water with our, our vessels, underwater with our submersible, and on land with the scenic free choice excursion. So this is the ultimate vacation, the ultimate uh, bucket list visitor, if you will, on, uh, on the high seas. Now I told you about the dining. I said dining is included. Uh, all dining, uh, all the nine menus are included. Now folks ask, when you go to these particular um, dining rooms, uh, what are the dress code? Is it more of the fancy, like tuxedos and suits? Or, evening gowns like what are you know black tie optional like what is the attire the attire is honestly country club casual or smart casual uh, or resort style casual whatever you want to call it basically suits um ties evening gowns the whole nine that those are not required now in the dining rooms i would say that you know you have dining rooms that are more casual uh, no reservations are required. You just If you just come into our venues, you can pick whatever you want. You can grab a cocktail, you can grab a coffee uh, and sit down and have nice little treats. The Yacht Club, for example, it's more uh, buffet style, if you will, uh, with different stations and you just grab and go. The Scenic Epicure, that's where uh, you can cook with the chef and he creates like little light like, bites for you when there's not any uh, classes going on. Elements is our main dining room. That's the dining room with no reservations. The bar is open up with various amount of wine, uh, types of wine, uh, charcuterie board if you want to. And it's more of a steakhouse Italian food. So these are more casual. Um, again, in our dining rooms, the only thing that we ask is that the, there is no shorts in the, um, the upscale dining rooms. I'll show you here in a minute. But in these dining rooms, you want to wear shorts boat shoes, whatever the case is, that's fine. 
but we get into more fine dining, we ask no shorts are available, uh, no shorts please, you know, either slacks or nice dresses, open toe is fine, but you know, just eat like a, you're going out at night in town. And these are the restaurants that do require a reservation because spaces is limited. You have Coco's, uh, which is the main dining room, Asian Fusion. Uh, we also have a sushi bar, night market, more hibachi style. Uh, Lumiere's is our French, contemporary French cuisine. In that bar that you see here, you can order um, champagne, about seven different types of champagne, and also caviar, and it is uh, complimentary. And then the chef's table is more for our super sweets, and that is a whole experience of its own. You're talking like seven course meal and the presentations are phenomenal. That's what makes it is the presentation. The seven, six to seven course meal with wine pairing. And again, only the super sweets are allowed. And again, these are by invitation only. And when I say super sweet, that's spa suite uh, and above up to the owner suite. So we do more than eat. We have other things to do on board. You have the state-of-the-art movie theater. We have our shows. It's not the Broadway shows. I don't want you to think that we have Jersey Boy or Mamma Mia or anything like that. But, you know, we do have nice shows. Um, sometimes bands. We play games here, game shows. The cruise director has a plethora of activities to do. And the city of the art theater is definitely something you want to be you want to be on. You have LED walls, you have the three screens, um, and those chairs actually do recline. Uh, so it's a great, and again, we put the schedule out there in your television around the ship. So again, you definitely want to tell your clients, definitely look for a show here in this beautiful theater. The bridge, the reason why it's there is because we have an open door policy on the bridge. As long as the door is open you're allowed to walk in and talk to the captain, you know, sit down, you know, talk to him, um, say where you're going, you know, look at the, uh, from the from his point of view, you know, the beautiful high seas. Uh, sometimes you even you can see the ship dock. Um, just please don't touch any buttons, you know, just, you know, look from afar, you know, don't touch. Uh, and definitely don't bring the captain a cocktail, he's fine. Um, so definitely do enjoy, do talk to the crew, you know, they have a lot of stories, a lot of conversational. I've heard some folks stay there for three or four hours at a time. Um, but again, you know, if the door is open, more than welcome to come in. If the door is closed, though, don't knock, just come back. Just tell your clients, just come back another time. I bet you like during your saying the door will be open and they're more than welcome to come and talk to the captain. The Scenic Lounge is my favorite spot. This is where you find me, because uh, it does a lot of seating, great for groups of people that want to congregate. Uh, maybe you're bringing some friends and family with you, or maybe meeting some new friends. So a lot of folks like to sit here, like to talk, meet before dinner, and they always like to grab a cocktail or um, some type of adult beverage in that tower right here, which is the 100 Choice Whiskey Bar. Here you have about 134 different types of whiskey, bourbon, scotches, you name it from all around the world. So again, this is where you find me. I'm a big whiskey guy. And so I like to just, you know, grab a nice whiskey, you know, with um, the cubes of, I like the sphere of ice or the big cubes of ice there on the rocks. That does just me sit down there, have a conversation. Maybe plan my day with my spouse or friends that we're with. And folks, I will tell you, if you have a little bit of whiskey, that's okay. Actually, we have a nice little coffee machine right here where you can pick a lot of great coffee. So you'll drink a little bit. You can end the night here with a good big coffee so that has no much of a hangover. The observation lounge is the hidden room. Uh, I'll be honest, not many people know about this room. So it's a good surprise and delight to tell your clients because here is where you take it in. This room is the most quietest room besides the meditation room, uh, room on board. But here is where you sit down and just see these beautiful uh, views of the places you're in. So imagine you know, you're in Antarctica and you see these beautiful glaciers and mountains, or, or if you're in Alaska, uh, or if you're in Tahiti or Fiji or Sydney, 
you know, and you see these beautiful landscape where you are. People like to come here, um, you know, to play cards sometimes, board games, uh, curl up with a good book. Uh, we do have our coffee shop, which is like right next to here. So you could grab a nice cup of joe or latte, uh, some teas, and just sit down and honestly take it in. There are two telescopes in there. So, you know, for those, you know, viewers, many folks want some pictures. This is for your photographers out there, this is actually the place that you want to be there. And you, there's actually a deck outside, like a big deck. Um, actually, not, you can see a little bit here with the picture, but folks like to come outside, come outside here, and those big lens cameras just take beautiful pictures of where they are. For those fitness buffs of people that just like to relax, uh, we do have the meditation room. Uh, this is folks come here. They do sound meditation, which is really good. Yoga, Pilates, there's TRX. So this is the Zen room. Um, then you have the full gym. So people like to do free weights or machines. Obviously, you can't have a gym without the spa. We have a full spa. The spa is one of the things that are not included. Spa treatments. However, the saunas, the... Uh, nice showers, uh, the rainfall showers, the plunge pool, the vitality pool, those are included. But if you, if your clients want to do their nails, go to the salon, get a nice massage, a facial, those will be extra. Uh, and as you see there, the spa is uh, is um, run by a spa. Another thing here about the spa is again four, about four to four to five treatment rooms. Um, very nice accommodations. So definitely something that if your folks just like to relax, definitely I recommend for them to visit. And of course, we're cruise ships, so no cruise ships ever complete without the boutique area, which is that right here. So again, I was a running joke. It's actually right by the whiskey tower. So, you know, I tell people when I do consumer shows, gents, you can sit down, have a whiskey and uh, and let your lady, you know, uh, or spouse go in here and uh, pick out whatever they want, or vice versa. You know, ladies can sit down, have a whiskey, and let the uh, let the spouse go and have a um, pick out a nice gift for anniversary or whatever, what have you. So again, it's it's just we have a little bit of everything, no matter where you are. Um, I honestly would say this is no matter her size, this is one of the best luxury cruise ships that I've been on. And Justin just told you, you know, the cruise lines that I've been with, and I've been with the very best of them. Honestly, this 232 passenger ship is complete and it's small, it's great. Intimate cruising is the buzzword. This is what people are looking post COVID. Again, there's a lot of pent up desire out there. So definitely if something that your clients are looking for something unique, I would definitely recommend to send them over here to the scenic eclipse. The stateroom size is large, 350 square feet or larger. This is the entry level stateroom, the veranda suite. We do not have any interiors or ocean views. It is all balconies. And 350 square feet is the starting stateroom. The deluxe, uh, the deluxe veranda or the grand, uh, the grand deluxe veranda suite has a larger living room, has a walk-in closet. Uh, so again, a lot more space on board the Eclipse. And then you have the super suites, where there'd be the spa suite, the owner suite, which is 2,100 square feet, has a jacuzzi outside, has a nice terrace, has seating areas, has chair swings, has the one bedroom. Um, it does have a beautiful walk-in closet, Hers or, his or her sinks with shower and bath. So that's basically your own condo on board the Scenic Eclipse. The Scenic Eclipse has, again, I mentioned this at the top, you know, has excursions that um, has a large variety of excursions. And we like to honestly provide a medley of excursions because again, as you know, a lot of clients like to do very different things. And we know on Scenic that not one size fits all. But apart from the excursions, you also have her water tour. You know, she does have the mudroom, uh, like an expedition ship, because again, we go to the Antarctica and the Arctic. In Antarctica, folks like to use the kayaks, folks like to go on the Zodiacs, 
or um, or the paddle boards. And those paddle boards are actually designed specifically for the scenic eclipse. We do have our discovery team, uh, which are those, and I don't like to use the word tour guides, but just for, just for sake of the presentation, I'm going to say they're tour guides, but they like to go into Zodiacs with you and kind of tell you like the narrative of where you are and, and what the things are happening around you. Um, there are biologists, marine biologists, glaciologists. I've actually never heard that uh, before, but actually there is a study of glaciers. And in these remote areas, you definitely want them to be with you because you're seeing all this beautiful landscape and you're wondering why are the glaciers like this? You know, why they're, you know, they're, they're floating a different way or, you know, why are the animals congregated here or what's going on? And again, they will tell you, this is the reasons why the animals are behaving. This is the reasons why there's a glacier here and a little bit here, um, you know, why is this formation of, of glaciers, of ice and so forth and so on. And again, everything is complementary. Now in Antarctica, if you want the full on experience, we do have the polar plunge um, that you can do complimentary. And if you do this, uh, we'll give you a nice certificate saying that you did the polar plunge, we'll wrap you on a, a blankets and, uh, and robes and give you a nice shot of whiskey to warm you up. So this is great. If you're cold looking at this and you say, you know what, is there any warm weather things to do? Folks, we go to all seven continents, so yes, there are warm weather activities to do. The scenic eclipse is very unique because she does not need an anchor to dock anywhere. Her stabilizers uh, that she has, that's the reasons why we don't need an anchor, her stabilizers is just as big as the oasis of the seas. So you can imagine the stabilizers that keep steady this humongous, 6,000 passenger ship of the Oasis of the Seas is on this little yacht of the scenic eclipse. And that's the reasons why we can dock anywhere we're environmentally friendly. So we go to all of the uh, coral reefs in the world and we're allowed to go there because we don't have an anchor, because we don't harm the environment. The submarine that we use is electrical. So think about a big Tesla. Uh, and then the helicopters that we use does not make any noise. Because again, our main thing when going to remote areas like Antarctica is we do not want to disturb the environment. But the, my favorite to do on warm weather uh, itineraries is don't be surprised that the ship will dock in the middle of the ocean and we take the Zodiacs and we go into this remote island and have a beach party. Uh, you know, the crew were going to the beach party, kind of like below deck style and barbecues, and we put out the chairs and everything. It's a remote sandbar in the middle of nowhere, and it's just us enjoying everything. No tourist trap, no, no one being in your face selling you something. It is you, your loved one next to you, or you by yourself enjoying life and just seeing your worries wash away with these beautiful itineraries that we do. So coming up, we do have the Scenic Eclipse 2 that's launching in just a few short weeks. The Scenic Eclipse 2, what makes her different is going to be the pool area. Uh, the Scenic Eclipse 1, which is the one currently right now in the ocean, uh, doesn't have this space. It's more like two big giant hot tubs and then you have the cabanas on each side. So we've heard our clients, uh, our guests feedback and you are travel uh, partners. And we have actually put a pool right in the very top deck. Uh, and it's very, it's oval ship. Uh, let me see, see if I can have a picture of it. Oh, uh, yep, I do. There it is right here. It's oval shaped. Uh, so folks like to come here um, and, and join the sun. And you see the lot of, um, uh, a lot of jets that's in uh, it's in the pool, and that's the reason being is that we also use it for those folks that want to exercise in the pool uh, and actually have you know those pools that um, you can swim in it, like laps and everything, but it pushes you back. This is actually what that is. And around the area, it's a lot of places for you to sun lounge. Again, only 232 people, so don't worry about pool chairs. We have plenty of space for everybody. Um, that's the bird's eye view, but more of a um, uh, more of a uh, facial view. This is actually what other um, places that you can sit. 
So again, plenty of space for you to sit down and enjoy the nice pool areas. Now, of course, we can have a pool with a, a little watering hole for, for you to cup in and grab something cold beverage and, and go outside or warm beverage, depending on where you are in the world. So the Scenic Eclipse 2 will have the Sky Bar, which is this right here. This is kind of a little lounge, little bar where you can grab a drink and sit down here, uh, come, uh, come, out, come inside from the elements. Uh, nice seating area, tells you where you are in the world. So it's very nice uh, space that we have new for the Scenic Eclipse 2. And then we have the Scenic Epicure. You saw the Epicure when the dining areas. So the only reasons why we highlight this, because the Epicure is more of a grab and go. You know, the chef is there, you do have the classes, you do have the kitchens there and everything, the stoves. But you do, when the chef does like a taster, like light bites, it's not a seating area. Most folks like to sit down, you know, talk to the chef or, you know, sit down with, uh, with, with their friends and have cocktails or wines, etc. But the Scenic Eclipse 1 doesn't have any seating area, but the Scenic Eclipse 2 will have the new seating area. Because the launch is in a few weeks, I definitely want to uh, talk about the godmother, you know, Dr. Kathy Sullivan, which she is honestly the perfect uh, person, uh, the perfect godmother to, um, to Chris and our ship. And she used to be a geologist, oceanographer, a NASA astronaut, and then U.S. Navy captain. So again, she is just perfect for the scenic eclipse. Uh, she was actually featured uh, in a few articles back, and I just don't remember the, um, the media where she was featured. But again, this is the perfect person to come in and uh, christen our scenic eclipse to in just a few short weeks. Like I mentioned, this is honestly our playground, all seven continents. A few itineraries that are right now in promotion is Japan for this summer. Uh, we do have uh, Japanese itineraries. Uh, so we do have uh, air, two for one air uh, included. Uh, I just have to double check on that. We also have Antarctica for later on this fall, so November to December. Our Antarctic itineraries are from November to April. But we do have space and promos right now for November and December of 2023. So there's one itinerary, the 14 day Ushuaia to Ushuaia, visiting the Weddell Sea. And we also have the 18 day going to Elephant Island, uh, South Georgia Island and the Falkland Islands as well. A little bit closer to home, uh, in May, we do have from San Diego up to Vancouver, 10 days visiting the wineries up the West Coast. And then we have uh, also the Caribbean for October, uh, going from Nassau to Montego Bay, and then from Montego Bay and continues uh, cruising the Panama Canal. And there's a lot more itineraries, some of them I did not cover. And we do have our printed brochures. You can go to our website, scenicusa.com. Uh, and definitely have a full scope of all of our itineraries that we offer. Again, we do all seven continents, like I mentioned. Scenic also has the river cruise component. I'm not going to go too much into details about river cruising, as I bet you um, some of you probably are returning back from the ASTA Expo. Uh, some of you probably have heard river cruising, but I'm just going to go in detail what makes this very different. Just like the scenic eclipse, we basically touch on, we include everything. So from excursions, the stateroom size is 205 square feet. So you still have the large staterooms, three dining rooms. We have specialty dining rooms. Um, we do have uh, the alcohol included, transfers, everything from A to Z. The only thing that we do not include is the spa, just like the eclipse. No helicopter and submarine on this one, I'm sorry. The stateroom size, uh, again, 205 square feet or larger. Uh, this is the uh, one of the entry level staterooms. We do have ocean views on this particular ship, um, but we have the ocean views and then this balcony stateroom are the entry levels. And again, you can go higher with our junior suites as well as uh, the owner suite. This is where we go, um, going from the Rhine River, the Danube, the Lower Danube, the Moselle, 
the Seine River, the Rhone River, which is the best culinary in the world from Lyon to Lyon. Uh, we have Avignon as well that we visit. Bordeaux, we go to four different regions in Bordeaux. And of course, the Dour River. As well, we have the Mekong that is not listed here. The Mekong, we go to Cambodia and Vietnam. Our cruises on the rivers are usually seven days, 11 or 15. Um, and then obviously you can do back to back as well. So it could be a little bit longer than 15, but usually 15 is the most. What makes us very different on the rivers is the, again, just like the Eclipse, the large variation of excursions that we offer. And again, we come with that concept that one size does not fit all. But really what makes Scenic different, you know, you have the free choice that you have here with your excursions. You have the large state rooms, you have the ample spaces, three dining areas, you know, from your main dining room to a specialty dining room. But most river cruise lines, you know, they have almost the same thing. But what makes Scenic very different is the Scenic Enrichment Program. Now, to put this in perspective, what the Scenic Enrichment Program is, is that one night or one day out of the entire sailing, okay, we like to invite our guests to a private venue. Now, this venue could be the Palais de Liechtenstein, as you see there in Vienna. Now, if you're familiar with Palais de Liechtenstein, you do know that it costs hundreds of dollars to get a ticket. One, two, if you find a ticket, because it's very popular and it's very hard to find a ticket. Three, it could be, you could be in a, in a room with 500 people or more. So the seating is very difficult. And you pay hundreds of dollars for this venue, and you might not even get a good seat. Same thing with Sounds of Music. Sounds of Music, hundreds of dollars in Salzburg. And you, when you might get a ticket, you might not. You know, I can go on and on and on, but you get the gist of it. What we like to do is rent out Highlight the Liechtenstein, Sounds of Music, and other venues, whether it be a concert or be a museum. And we like to rent out these spaces and only bring our guests. And on the scenic river ships, you're talking about the most guests, 164 passengers. And everybody comes in here, again, on board. Again, the op let me retract. Folks have the opportunity to come here. Again, it's up to them if they want to, but definitely it's something that they do not want to miss. They come in here, the seating is just them. So they're, they're going to have a great seat front and center and have a private show or private access to a museum, depending on what venue do we have available on their sailing. And again, the key thing here, the key takeaway, it is just us. It's close to the public, it's close to any other cruise line, it is just us. If you don't know these venues, if you're like, okay, Andy, I'm new to this, I'm a fish out of water. So I don't wanna say, oh, you get to go to Palais de Liechtenstein, my client looks at me like I have four heads. Like, can you give me an equivalent here in the US? Probably some venue that folks know that I can say, hey, it's kind of like you're going to here and there. Yes, I can. So remember, so think about if I would tell you that I'm just going to rent out Carnegie Hall in New York for our guest, and we're going to have front and center best, best seats of the house seating for our clients and there's no one else. There's absolutely no one else. And we're gonna have a private concert or a private show for our guests. That's the type of caliber that I'm talking about. The museums that we rent out, think about the Met in New York. This huge, nice museum, it's only our clients and they have those backs, uh, backstage VIP passes. That's the type of caliber that I'm talking about. And folks, best of all, the cherry on top, it is included. There is no additional cost for doing this. And that's really what makes Scenic very different from all the river cruises out there. And of course, the service, you know, top notch. Uh, for every guest that we have, we have one crew member as well. So that's Scenic. Um, so Emerald. So before I go into Emerald, I. I want to come back 
and kind of tell you the reasons why we have both brands. I should have done this in the top of the key, but it just I'm just so excited, just wanted to dive right in. So you remember that we have one company and these two brands. We like Scenic because Scenic is the creme de la creme. It is everything included, butler service in every stateroom, so forth and so on. You got that. Emerald is a second choice for guests that may not want all the bells and whistles, may not want all inclusive, may want still the luxury feel, luxury touch, the luxury feeling, but they don't want the luxury price tag. And that's why Emerald is part of our company. Emerald has the same components, a river and a yacht. They're a little different on the experience and a little bit different on what you're going to amenity wise, but it's still what I like to say, nicely included. So just like Scenic, I'm going to talk about the demographics on Emerald. So you guessed it, it's a little bit younger. So the baby boomers, yes, but you also have young professionals. You have empty nesters, you have world travelers, parents with teenagers, talking about like middle school to high school age. You know, they like to use the ports as educational for their kids. These are the type of clientele that you find on Emerald. What's included on an Emerald cruise? It doesn't have all the bells and whistles as scenic, but what's included on an Emerald cruise is going to be your transfers, and it doesn't matter if your transfers, um, if you, sorry, if you book your air through us or not, we will still include the transfers. Wi-Fi is included with streaming service. Gratuities are included, and not just for the crew members, but also for the tour guides, and beer and wine and lunch and dinner, and up to two shore excursions at every port. That is, again, what an Emerald Cruise includes. Now, we get to talk about this beautiful ship, which it, or ships, which is the Emerald Azura and the Emerald Saqqara, which are two beautiful ocean ships. Now, she's very different from her big sister, the Scenic Eclipse. The Emerald Yacht, one, carries only 100 passengers. Two, she doesn't travel all seven continents like her sister. She is more, hangs around in the Mediterranean area, so Adriatic, Aegean, Ionian, the Red Sea, Arabian Sea, and she's gonna come here to the Caribbean for this fall. The beautiful highlights of this beautiful super yacht is the Infinity Pool. Now, if you're thinking, hmm, looks familiar to the Eclipse. Yes, actually, that's how, why we got the scenic Eclipse too, looking like this, because everybody loves this area here on the Emerald Yachts. The Amichu Bar and Lounge is with the heartbeat of the show, so everybody goes in. And yes, folks, we have different things than Genesis State marketing photos, and more different, um, more variation when it comes to alcohol. Now, she only has one dining room. She doesn't have nine like her, like Scenic Eclipse. She only has one, uh, but that's okay. You know, we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served here. You can sit down, order from a menu, or you can also order buffet style. Buffet style is open for breakfast and lunch, but not dinner. Everything in dinner is sit down. This is my personal favorite, the sky deck. This is the bird's eye view of everything. You have the hot tubs there. You have a nice sitting area, nice bar, a nice bar area. And then you also have the marina. This is honestly the best. You can come outside here on sea days. The ship might be docking. Uh, you can come out and go into the ocean or just jump on the inflatable trampoline. Uh, the jet ski, the kayaks. This tender is actually ours. Actually, it's crane from here down here. So we don't have to wait for anybody. So if you want to do a private beach party or anything like that, we definitely have our tender and it connects to the ship. So it's not it's not going to be wonky or anything like that. It's going to be very sturdy. The staterooms on the yachts are 205 square feet or larger. We do have ocean view rooms. We do have balconies. Okay. But we also have larger state rooms like the, the deluxe balcony, which has the living room and the, um, the bedroom. And that's about like 400 square feet. And then you have the terrace, yacht, and owner suite, which again, they're bigger in size as you go up. The yacht loves to go, again, like I told you, the Mediterranean, 
the Caribbean, the Emirates. Uh, it will be it'll be going to the Seychelles hopefully very soon. But the thing I want you to honestly look at this is it's just not cruising. This is yachting. And when it comes to yachting, we can go to very boutique ports that the big cruise ships can go to. Example, this is one of the itineraries that we offer. We offer going into Venice. Now, you all probably, uh, you probably know about Venice that it's about a two to three hour bus ride to get from the airport to where the big ships dock. Our bus rides from the airport to where the ship is is only 15 minutes. And the reason being is because of our size of the ship. But look at Croatia. Look at where this itinerary goes. So almost six ports in Croatia, to, not to include um, Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik will be the seventh one. But look at these beautiful ports in Croatia. In Croatia right now, it's very big. And we spend a day in, in all these ports. To put this in perspective where we go, check out this itinerary, Rome to Athens. We, we take a day going to Capri, Sorrento, and Amalfi. So you spend a day in Capri, a day in Sorrento, and a day in Amalfi. Usually, what you have to do if you're on a big cruise ship is you have to go to Naples and have a bus excursion or a speedboat to get to these three itineraries, and it's fitting everything in about five to six hours which is great, you visit the highlights, but you don't get to sit down, have an espresso, um, the beautiful cafe in Capri, or in Amalfi, you don't even get to see the church, the beautiful church here in Amalfi, so forth and so on. You don't see it, but when you go on a yacht, you spend a day so you can take your time looking at these beautiful ports. Sicily right now is very popular because of the show White Lotus. If you haven't watched White Lotus on HBO, definitely I recommend it. It's a great show for you to watch. But right now, Sicily is a hot point because of that show. And we go to these points in Sicily and then obviously Greece. And we go to more islands in Greece than just Mykonos and Santorini. We go definitely a lot more of the Greek. We visit more of the Greek Isles uh, because, again, of our size. For the Caribbean, we do uh, Caribbean sailings out of San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'm sorry, folks, we don't go out of Florida, but we do go to San Juan, seven day cruises, visiting Virgin Gorda, Josh Van Dyke. Uh, we go to the French side of uh, St. Martin and Vieques Island. And Vieques Island is very popular because of the bioluminescent bay. We also have other Caribbean itineraries. Check out this one to visit the Windward Islands. Uh, this one goes from St. Martin to Barbados, visiting the Grenadine Islands. If beach is not your thing, maybe you want to do something else to the beach, we have this Costa Rica one, which visits a lot more uh, rainforests, as well as a little bit more expedition from Panama, going to Colombia, and going to Barbados. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, this is this looks like below deck, like that show in Bravo. Well, I have a surprise for you. We actually going to have Chef Ben from below deck on two sailings. Uh, one is October 28th, uh, visiting the coastal gems of Italy and Croatia. That's October 28th of this year. And March 2nd of 2024, we're going to have the Caribbean one. The Caribbean one goes from San Juan, Puerto Rico, down to St. John's in Antigua and uh, Barbuda. And we also have the Mediterranean one, which is Civitavecchia into Venice. And with that, folks, I'm just going to end it with our river cruise product, uh, Emerald River Cruises. Again, I'm not spend too much time on it. But what I am going to um, tell you is this river cruise product, we have five, seven, and 11 days. So if you want testers, maybe your clients want to take a dip a toe in the water on this river cruises, we have it. The highlight of an Emerald River cruise is the um, indoor pools. And this indoor pools is 80 degrees. So if you're going on a Christmas market cruise, that's like maybe 10 below zero, this area is here is always gonna take 80, it's gonna be at 80 degrees, so bring your swimsuits. And we also have here, oops, uh, the um, pool area does convert into a uh, movie theater at nighttime. I just wanna to mention to you that we have family river cruises for this summer. 
we have, um, we're going to do different activities when it comes to kids. We lower the age from 12 to 10. We're going to have excursions that are going to be family oriented and a lot of activities to do on the ship. And of course, we have the itineraries. That's the Rhine River on July the 17th of this year. And we have the Danube on July 15th of this year. No, folks, we do not have any triples or quads. Everything is double occupancy. But what we are going, we are offering for the family river cruises, if you buy one stateroom and you need a second stateroom uh, for the children, we are giving it at 50% off. So um, if you, again, love this webinar, you want a little bit more, uh, please visit our agent portal at scenicusa.com. We have lots of things, a lot of goodies for you, social media, travel advisor incentives, deck plans, offers, and how you get your agency registered. Maybe you're not registered with us yet, but definitely someplace that you definitely do, you can register and also do the Agent Academy. We also have YouTube channels. Uh, please visit our YouTube channel. We have lots of videos there, and you can definitely um, take a minute there and share videos on your social media. And lastly, this is where you can find myself. You can actually scan the QR code. Um, it gives you a lot of nice websites for you um, as point of references. This is how you contact me if you're in Florida um, and this is your email. If you're not in Florida, you want to find your um, particular RS, uh, RSD, Regional Sales Director, just send me a quick note. I definitely will point you in the right direction. Folks, thank you very, very much. I know I went a little bit over time, uh, but I just, these are beautiful things for you to visit, uh, you to, um, to let you know your clients. So I will go ahead and throw it back to our host, Justin, to see if there are any questions. Hey, thank you so much, Andy. That was awesome and informative. Uh, we do just have a few questions. Um, one quick question, uh, as a former BDM, what advice would you give to newer travel agents? Uh, I would say if you're, if you're new into the industry, you want to get the luxury business. Again, I would definitely say, you know, always have find little tidbits about each brand and always have it in your back pocket. Learn, try to research a, a few, like for example, you can research Scenic and Emerald, but other cruise lines out there in the luxury market, in the contemporary, in the premium. Just have a medley of, I used to like to use that word, but medley of uh, brands and put it in your travel portfolio. That way, you know, when you're talking, having conversations with your clients, you know, you might say, you know what, I might have something here for you and give them a few choices because you never know, you know, when that person might come in and say, you know what, I want to take the scenic eclipse or a world cruise. I want to go on 180 day cruises. So just don't focus on one brand. Don't, you know, I know you've probably gone, probably some of you have gone on the contemporary lines maybe the premium line and so forth and so on. Don't concentrate yourself on just one brand get yourself educated on multiple brands. That's going to make you a very effective travel advisor. That's great advice. Thank you, Andy. Um, we do have a few more questions. Um, one of them just being, uh, what is the average capacity of the Emerald ships? Uh, the Emerald Azura is 100 passengers, and then the Emerald River ships 184 passengers. Great. That's about the max, but it could be a little less depending on what river you're in. All right. And uh, with the smaller number of guests and a great ratio of crew to passengers on your ships, can you tell us a little bit about the, the multiple positions that the crew members might hold? Do they wear different hats? Um, some of them do, I'll be honest with you. Like, well, lately, you know, as we're getting out of COVID, you know, that was the thing last year, um, what they did wear multiple hats, but we are hiring mm -hmm. a little bit more crew members. So the responsibilities are a little bit now less and less. Because again, we still want to uphold the best of service. Awesome. All right. And where would you say most of your passengers are from? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't talk about that. It's a hunchpodge. Um, so a lot of a lot of things about traveling on scenic or emerald is when I went on board, there it, it wasn't all Americans. It was a hodgepodge with Australians, 
uh, with folks from the UK, Europeans, Canadian and Americans. So it's a hodgepodge of cultures. I would say as of right now, and again, here in North America, we're trying to bring in a little bit more American and Canadians, but if you have to narrow it down, I'll say a lot more Australians and folks from the UK um, than Americans. So we're here in the US, we're trying to get the word out. So we have more, a little bit more Americans on board. Great, that's awesome information. Um, all right, we'll go with one more question. Um, and is it is, does Scenic have any solo accommodations? Yes, we actually just and we made an announcement that um, this year, actually for this year and next year, we, we do have single rooms, by the way, on the river cruises. Um, but right now we're offering 125% uh, reduced single supplement on Emerald and for Scenic River uh, and some ocean cruises. So definitely if you have a solo uh, folks, you know, call our reservation center or reach out to your local RSD and we can definitely uh, give you a list if you want to market to solo travelers. Great. All right, and uh, one more quick question. Uh, do any of the ships include a cigar lounge or a smoking area? No, not smoking. Nope. All right. Great. Uh, well, that looks like that is all the questions we have in the question box that I can see right now. Um, so if no one has any more questions, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Andy, for a great presentation. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting on a scenic cruise myself and uh, getting in a submarine. <laughs> That's all, awesome, Justin. Hey, we'd like to have you. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. On behalf of CLIA, thank you for attending, and we look forward to seeing you at a future webinar. Thank you very much. Thanks.